power, have the money and the guns, and we've got facts, that is the truth, and we've got moral authority. We're the ones who want no starving children in the world. We're the ones who want no clear-cut forests. We're the ones that want organic food that doesn't poison us. So we will win, right? This is not a guessing game. I'm not making a prediction. We will win. You know, I meet a lot of people who uh, really are interested in changing the world. I bet if I ask all of you, if you thought the world needed changing, what would you say? Would you yeah, it needs changes. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with this plant, it's 5,000 years old and has 50,000 uses, and it's been mixed up with the marijuana issue. Industrial hemp uh, is a source of food. It's a source of fuel. It replaces cutting down trees because it's a great uh, way to make paper. And it produces medicines, lubricants, <laughs> all kinds of products. And it's a plant that can be brought, uh, grown almost anywhere in the United States with almost no pesticides or herbicides. It's the longest, sturdiest fiber plant uh, on earth. Uh, the farmers can grow the, the grains to make the biodiesel. They can grow the grains to make the uh, ethanol. And they can uh, make their biodiesel and then with the waste product using potassium hydroxide to have a good soil builder. The, uh, ingredients to make potash. So that's the loop. Got to close that loop. Our challenge is to convert that public support into public policy. And I have a couple of specific suggestions for how I think we get there. First, we must contact our elected officials at all levels of government to let them know there is a large constituency of voters out there who oppose treating marijuana smokers like criminals. So candidates need to know that we can mount a sizable number of people. Against them if they try to do what Bush and Gore did in the last election, which was a conspiracy of silence. Neither one of them wanted to mention it because both their hypocrisies were so glaring that they just left it off the field because both of them had such an immense drug history in their own lives. They knew firsthand. I could forgive Bob Dole, who was like my father, you know, don't give me shooting pot, you know, that... <laughs> I could forgive that era. I cannot forgive the Al Gores and George Bushes, who were right there when drugs were fun and not the greatest evil in America. Who do you think got better weed in college? George Bush Jr. or Bill Clinton? <laughs> oh. George Bush Jr. And why? That's a great question. Yeah, that's a really funny question. Social movements take decades to happen. You know, women work for the right to vote, the right to own property for a hundred years until it finally happened. The, uh, the ending of the slavery, uh, ending of slavery took hundreds of years before it finally happened. The civil rights for minorities took hundreds of years, but it did happen. But it is difficult, and so does the patients, and those of us who use it recreationally as well, have to fight against a large, ever-growing, corrupt prison industry that supplies cheap labor as before.